All right, today's video, we're gonna go over the CNC router and do maybe kind of an overview and then maybe we'll get into cutting some aluminum for my new fixture plate. So, yeah, let's, let's do this. All right, you wanna do this? All right, come on. Okay, we got this router new from Axion Precision in May of 2016. So we're coming up on almost four years. This is March. And next month it'll be four years. Uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic machine. Very reliable. Um, and this was one of the first machines this was one of the, the first generation of this machine. They've since upgraded a lot of the internals. Um, we, I went over and talked to Chad over there at Axion Precision. He's their uh, customer service guy, IT guy. He's the guy that I call when I get stuck with a problem. Um, thank you, Chad, for bailing me out more than once. So we'll, we'll talk about some of the problems that I had with it very, it, from the very beginning. Um, and, and it wasn't anything major. I'll tell you that right now. Um, after several years of running it, like a year and a half, um, I had to replace the ball screw. Now, I personally don't think that the ball screw was bad, but we went ahead and changed it anyway. Um, when they first made this router, this, uh, the, the X-axis motor was small. I don't know why they did that, but they put in a small motor for this, this X-axis. Put a, put a larger motor in and I turned up the potentiometer so it gave more juice to the motor and I had zero problems out of the x-axis since that. Um, now I've been running lithium grease on mine but and Chad will tell you don't run lithium grease. Everybody that's associated with Axiom will tell you don't run lithium grease. And I'll tell you don't run lithium grease unless you take your ball screws completely apart, clean them, and pack it from the very beginning with lithium grease. Uh, I talked to Chad about why they don't recommend lithium grease and he said that the ball screws come with some kind of oil in them and that's what the manufacturer recommends so don't do what i'm saying but i'm just telling you what i do uh lithium grease on the rails lithium grease on the ball screws um i probably run mine harder than the majority of the people that own these because we're cutting hundreds of handles at a time on these things um it'll run eight hours a day, days in a row, just doing the same part over and over and over again. And we'll get into that later. Um, other than that, it's been absolutely problem free. Those are the only two things that I've had to replace was the ball screw and then that, that motor. And then I dropped 
my controller and I broke the bottom end off of it and I had to replace that, but that was my fault. That wasn't anything that happened with the, with the router, you know, factory defect or anything. Um, and I, and I do cut aluminum with it and that's kind of tricky and you can see these are my fixture plates and that's, that's what I'll make. That's how I cut my hands. And I'll, I'll explain that a little, a little more in depth later on in the video. Um, and at some point in here, I'm gonna insert Chad's talk and his description about the new machine versus the old machine. I probably will upgrade this to a newer one this year. It's not because there's anything wrong with it. It's just the newer one would give me the the fourth axis. So the fourth axis was like a a lathe head that you can turn true three dimensional objects without having to unbolt it and flip it over and then cut the other side. All right, sir. So we're over here at Axion Precision in Columbus, Ohio, and we're taking a look at the newest Pro Series machine. And this has got the fourth axis. And we'll let Chad talk about some upgrades that they've done to the Pro Series. Hey, Chad. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so as, as you were saying, this is the new Pro V5 our fifth generation of the, of the Pro Series machine. Uh, like all the machines previous, uh, we're using linear prismatic guides, we roll ball screws on all axes. Um, what really separates this machine apart, other than the uh, facelift here and the color change, is largely the larger stepper motors. Uh, all of our machines previously, the Pro, the Basic, the I2R, uh, and, and now the new Iconic as well, are all using 24 volt uh, NEMA 23 stepper motors, pretty much a standard in the small format industry. This machine, however, is using 48 volt, higher torque, higher speed steppers, uh, larger stepper control boards in the control box down here, uh, as well as a, uh, a new higher amperage, higher torque uh, VFD for the spindle. Um, so we're getting more power at the motor, more power for the movement of the machine for higher speed and uh, uh, torque on those more aggressive cuts uh, and, and like all the machines previous it is still fourth axis uh, capable for the pro series so, now what do you mean by fourth axis um, fourth axis is this uh, accessory that can be added to any of the machines back here for turning of table legs um, yeah, little statues and models. We've got some interesting foosball players over here you can get a shot of. But essentially, you'd remove a couple of the strips of the table and mount that to the rear, and then there's a live center that goes on the front here to allow you to grasp uh, a spindle and do things like this. So to be really more like a CNC wood lathe. Uh, essentially, yeah. You know, a lot of people will do simple table legs, but you know, then you can also do, you know, more detailed. Uh, pieces like this is a part of a foosball table that we're working with mm -hmm. uh, Otterbein University on. Um, things that you can't do with a lathe is really where this excels. Like your 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 twists here, um, you know the Darth Vader heads. Mm -hmm. and I've got a few people that are doing more like hammer handles. There are artistic pieces that are scaled and all that detail work's been done, so they don't have to do the uh, the hand carving later. So this this machine is really kind of kind of built for artists. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, primarily the focus would be on small signage companies, uh, home hobbyists, small shop kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of artistic pieces. Um, but then we've got guys that are doing simple two dimensional aluminum brackets, uh, you know, fabricated parts mm -hmm. that uh, much more affordable than your standard mill. But a, as you found out. You know, while it's capable for metal, yeah, it typically requires just a little bit different approach to the machine maintenance and, and setup in general. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Chad. Yeah, no problem. 
So as far as maintenance goes on these things, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, keep your keep your guide rails lubricated. Keep your ball screw lubricated. Um, I would say at least once a year, you need to check your backlash, and this this nut right here controls the amount of backlash that you have. Just you know, tighten that thing down, and your backlash is set. It's really very easy. I had to uh, tighten up that nut ahead of that Lovejoy coupling. And this is underneath my router. And the good boy right there has been trying to help dad, haven't you? Because I'm laying on my back. Be able to reach that. So much fun. All right, that's it, boy. Let's go home.